Hello guys, welcome to biology class and the today's topic is cell, the fundamental unit of life. So before going further, remember these five names, okay? So the name first one is Anton Von Leeuwenhoek. Second name is Robert Hook. Third are, there are two people, so they are Lidden and Schwann. Fourth one is Rudolf Wachow. Pronunciation and spelling may go wrong, so just cross verify. And the last name is Robert Brown. So these are five personalities that you should remember in cell, the fundamental unit of life. So Anton von Leeuwenhoek. So he observed the cell for the first time. Okay, and Robert Hooke he gave the term cellulae, which is now replaced as cell. And Skledin and Chuan, they gave the cell theory, which you all may know. And Rudolf Virchow, he modified the cell theory. And Robert Brown discovered the nucleus of the cell. Okay. So remember these five names and with these we will go further. So as you all know, uh, every organism is composed of cells. Okay. So there are two kinds that is unicellular and second one is multicellular. So uni, uni means single and multi means many. So as the name suggests, unicellular means the organisms or the animals which are composed of single cells. Okay. For example, here we can see amoeba, best example, and another one is paramoecium, bacteria, etc. There are many, but remember these. Okay. And multicellular, these are many. Every plant is multicellular, then animals then fungi etc so these are unicellular and multicellular so unicellular means single cell and multicellular means many cell okay now we saw that organisms are made up of unicellular and multicellular now we'll see about the shape of cells okay so the shape of cell may be fixed fixed shape therefore example is plant cell so they are fixed in shape and next is no cell they have fixed shape of cell now shape may vary so different shape of cells so example is amoeba best example so amoeba has no constant shape of cell so shape may vary and here shape of cell is fixed okay and one more thing uh, remember these two things so ostrich egg egg is the biggest cell and mycoplasm is the smallest cell okay now let's study the cell structure and its components so suppose take example of a body so our body consists of stomach Osophagus, eyes, ears, it has different parts and each part has different functions to perform, right? So cell is also made up of different parts. That's uh, those parts are named as cell organelles and it uh, some of them are suppose I will draw a rough diagram here. Suppose this is a cell. Okay. And these are two layers. The outer one is cell wall. The inner one is cell membrane okay this is a rough diagram not the real and your center or in any region we have the nucleus 
its nucleus then they may have mitochondria then you we have endoplasmic reticulum then here we have golgi complex then mitochondria blastoids then we may have plastids vacuoles plastids then lysosomes ribosomes ribosomes are present on endoplasmic reticulum let's study each of them short so the first organelle is cell membrane or you can call it as plasma membrane okay so it's the outermost layer of the cell layer which is rigid this is that means tough it gives the structural strength to the cell and helps in transport of materials materials in and out of the cell then it also separates cell from the external environment okay as we all saw cell membrane allows the transport of materials right so transport of materials takes place by two processes one is diffusion and other one is osmosis okay diffusion co2 and o2 transfer takes place in and out of the cell okay and osmosis but here the membrane is not semi permeable so uh, easy pass of co2 and o2 can occur here and here osmosis the water or all the solvent solutes everything passes for for example take example as water okay so water passes from one cell to another through osmosis but through a semi permeable membrane so this is very important osmosis has semi permeable membrane and diffusion takes place directly so it doesn't have semi permeable membrane okay so this can resist some of the materials to pass or not through the cell okay and this may this doesn't resist any materials okay so here co2 and o2 can take place and here osmosis can occur through a semi permeable membrane okay all the water and mineral salts are passed in plants suppose take example of a plant so water from the roots goes towards every part of the plant through osmosis okay now osmosis in osmosis there are three types if if the consider this as a cell and this is the medium okay you have placed a cell in a medium and if the concentration of water is high here compared to concentration of the cell okay then water passes inside this cell okay this is water through osmosis when this type of transfer occurs that means cell gains water this type of solution is known as hypotonic solution and when vice versa situation occurs that means if the concentration of water outside the cell is lesser compared to the inside then water from cell goes outside that is cell shrinks in second case and in prior case cell expands that means it gains water so it is hypotonic solution where cell gains water and it is hypertonic solution when cell loses water okay cell gains water okay and the third case is neutral medium when the concentration of both cell and medium are equal in case of water that solution is known as isotonic no gain no loss okay
remember this hypotonic is where cell gains water hypertonic is cell loses water and isotonic no change okay now the second cell organ is, is the cell wall it is exclusively present only in plant cells remember this cell wall is present only in plant cells it is absent in animal cells so what are the specifications of a cell wall so it lies beneath beneath or lower to plasma membrane okay this is main plasma membrane or cell membrane okay and the primary cell wall is consist of cellulose cellulose and the secondary cell wall may be composed of this is primary and secondary is lignin and pectin so in most of the cases we find cell wall made up of cellulose but in case of secondary it's lignin and pectin lignin and pectin are harder than cellulose okay they give strength i guess so okay when as we have seen earlier when cell loses water that is it shrinks cell cell shrinks and it takes all the cell organelles away from the cell wall okay this process is known as plasmolysis remember this process okay and also the main function of cell wall is that suppose when cell shrinks there is other case where cell expands right so in case of cell expansion the cell wall stops the swelling of cell organelles organelles that means when the cell starts expanding the cell organelles starts expanding inside so cell wall gives equal and opposite pressure so it maintains equilibrium and it doesn't allow the cell to explode so cell wall helps in that okay now the third component that is cell organelle is the nucleus now nucleus this is rough diagram i'm drawing okay so consider this as the nucleus okay okay this is nucleus and here it's chromatin network network and this is nuclear membrane and suppose this is the cell here the fluid is known as cytoplasm so okay so nucleus is made up of double layered membrane called nuclear membrane okay and nuclear membrane helps has pores you can see these pores okay these pores allow transfer of materials from the nucleus towards the cytoplasm okay and the nucleus contains chromatin network these this chromatin network forms chromosomes rough diagram okay chromosomes during cellular reproduction and these chromosomes have the genetic material that contains genes or dna you know and uh, depending upon these genetic material we inherit good or bad things okay so these are chromosomes and we can see these chromosomes only during the phase of reproduction of the cell not during other phase and these are tubular shaped chromosomes and before reproduction we can see them as chromatin network okay this is all about nucleus the next is cytoplasm so cytoplasm is nothing but the fluidish part so this all part in which all cell organelles are present is called cytoplasm okay that's the only thing that you should know about it i guess if you want to know more just google it so the next is endoplasmic 
reticulum okay so i will draw a rough structure so this is nucleus double layered and from here it starts like this tube like structures are present okay and here ribosomes present okay so endoplasmic reticulum is is a network of large tubular like structures so this is endoplasmic reticulum and there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum one is rough endoplasmic reticulum and second one is smooth endoplasmic reticulum now you can see ribosomes here right so the endoplasmic reticulum that has ribosomes is known as rough endoplasmic reticulum now you can remember it as r e r r for ribosomes okay so rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes as smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosomes you can differentiate like that okay now endoplasmic reticulum helps in transport of materials from the nucleus to the other parts of the cell that's one function and the second function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum is that it helps in formation of lipids and fats which one the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and these lipids may help to form a cell membrane and this process is known as biogenesis okay and this smooth endoplasmic reticulum sometimes also helps in detoxifying drugs which are formed okay that's the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the major function is to transport materials from nucleus to other parts of the cell okay the next one is golgi apparatus or golgi complex you may call okay now the rough structure i will draw here so these are like this this is golgi complex and these are again tubular structures or vesicles which are exactly parallel to each other parallel to each other and they were described by camillo golgi camillo or camilla is you cross it okay now the major function of golgi apparatus is storage modification and packaging of materials inside these vesicles okay and the next one is that these golgi apparatus may also be involved in the production of lysosomes and these are connected with endoplasmic reticulum and may also help in transport of materials in between them okay so this is golgi apparatus another point is that they help in making the sugars that are complex into simpler ones last point i know okay so the next is lysosomes as you all know they are known as suicide bags of the cell why they are known as suicide bags because they help in digesting any foreign material which is harmful to the cell because they contain enzymes which are powerful and they degrade those components and they kill it and they also help in protecting sorry protecting other cells when cell gets damaged suppose this part of cell gets damaged then lysosomes will burst and the enzymes present in these lysosomes they digest the entire cell protecting the other cells that's why they are very important okay. the next one is mitochondria now mitochondria is known as the power house of the cell this part everybody knows but why power of the cell because they help in generating atp that stands for adenosine triphosphate 
this is energy giving component uh, during any chemical reaction when anybody needs energy then ATP are generated by mitochondria which help in chemical reaction okay and how these ATPs are generated or where these ATPs are generated mitochondria has two layers the uh, sorry two membranes the outer one is porous and the inner one is folded okay and these folds help in generating ATP that's why it's called powerhouse of the cell so the mitochondria has the own DNA and ribosomes which help in generating protein for whatever production mitochondria has to that's all about mitochondria next one is plastids okay there are two types of plastids one is chromoplast which are colored and second one is leucoplast which are white the plastids containing the pigment chlorophyll are known as chloroplast and these helps in photosynthesis and leucoplasts help in storage of starch and oil okay the last one is vacuoles okay vacuoles are present in both plants and animal cells but in case of plant cells 80 to 90 percent of cell volume is composed of vacuoles in plant cell but in case of animal cells there's more so plastids sorry vacuoles cover large area in case of plant cell obvious and in case of animal cells they cover small area so vacuoles helps in storage that is it's like a sack so it's a storage element now we will lastly we will see the difference between a prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell okay in prokaryotic cell the nuclear membrane is absent in eukaryotic it's present okay here nucleus is incipient and here they have true nucleus Okay, here are 70s ribosomes are present and here 80s ribosomes are present. So remember these differences. Nuclear membrane is absent, here it's present. Nucleus is incipient and in eukaryotic cell it's true nucleus. The size of ribosome is 70s, size of ribosome is 80s. Lastly, we will see the difference between plant cell and animal cell now, the first one is here cell wall is present here it absent now second difference is that what's the second difference vacuoles occupy large space second one is they occupy small space third difference is that plastids are present here they are absent the shape of cell shape and size of cell is constant shape and size and here it may vary fifth one is they have autotropic cell they have heterotropic cell autotropic means they can prepare their own food I guess now sixth one is they store their food in the form of starch and here they store their food in the form of glycogen 
so remember these differences that's all about sell the fundamental unit of life and if you like the video do like share and subscribe